The Broncos fans are showing up here in big numbers, as you can see behind me. Luckily, the rain has stopped for now. They took the tarp off the field about an hour ago. In a surprising move, the Broncos releasing kicker Matt Prater today, cutting their most accurate kicker in franchise history. This is the new sod the Broncos are installing. It's 100% Kentucky bluegrass. Jim McElwain is the Gators' top coaching candidate, and the negotiations are continuing. Owen Daniels is reunited with Broncos head coach Gary Kubiak. The Nuggets could have taken him earlier, but they waited, and he turned out to be the steal of the draft. 300 tickets have just gone on sale. The line is already forming at the box office. The grandstands were packed here today with thousands of fans to see the women's downhill. Last year's first round pick, Sylvester Williams, picked off Peyton Manning. He said it's the first time he's done that. Put on those fantastic parades. And look, what happens during sports, Boris? Dave, <laughs> Dave gave me some advice. Manning was limited again in practice today. How exciting is it for you to just walk around the city and, and see everyone showing their Broncos spirit today? It's Salary certainly a factor, but we haven't seen McManus have to kick a game winner, True. kick in cold conditions. True. Michael Stone loves to run on the trail. From his first race at the Boulder Boulder. Coming into that stadium was the greatest feeling I ever had. He was hooked. And that kicked off a series of events. Events including many marathons and 11 Ironman triathlons, all without seeing where he's going. The brighter things are, the less I see. It just, everything's very washed out. Stone was born with vision, but he slowly lost his sight. So the focus is everything. Now legally blind because of a retinal degenerative disease. What was emotional was your life, you know, people see their life pass before their eyes. Well, all the aggravation and frustration, that just sent me into tears. Diagnosed 10 years ago. <laughs> it's okay, bud. He doesn't let the disease keep him from doing what he loves, along with his guide dog, Wrigley. He's pulled me back several times from getting hit by cars. Come on, let's go. Stone's right. other running partner, his goddaughter, McKenna Hobson. He kind of shows me that even if something, like, does go wrong, like, it's not perfect vision or anything, you can still do it. To, like do your favorite things. McKenna and Michael will paint together. I sit here basically with my eyes closed and I just, I just move. And even play music. I can still hear it and feel it and love it. There have been hurdles to overcome on the road. You know, I might run off course because of maybe not knowing the course. Fast feet, keep going, there you go. But Stone is determined to keep running, biking, and swimming. There's something about not quitting that means a lot to me. Stone hasn't let his condition slow him down. He's also a sports performance coach, a motivational speaker, and he's also written a book, I Envy Perspectives into Vision Loss. I'm inspired by people every day. So if, if somebody else is inspired by it, wonderful. One of the biggest things that I hope for is that certainly people start pushing right. their limits. Amazing story, Michelle. I, I mean, the fact of the matter is he found out that he was going blind 10 years ago. That's unbelievable. Most people would crumble, maybe some, but this guy didn't. Right, and, and Michael said that, you know, the fact that he was diagnosed later in life, he was willing to try yeah. a lot of adventures, and that didn't hold him back at all. And, uh, you know, he's just truly, he said he doesn't see himself as an inspiration, but I certainly see him as an inspiration. It was, it was just great getting to meet him. And, uh, you know, he's really willing to do everything and, yeah. and try new things. And that dog is adorable. He, he trained that dog. Wrigley was a rescue dog <laughs> that he got, and, uh, yeah, he trained him all himself. He's pretty cute. He's so high, he just jumped. Evan Villanueva can't wait to see the Denver Nuggets up close. I was walking by Ty, I was about to just be like, I love you. I love you. As a senior playing football at Chaparral High School, he skipped practice for this special day. I've been waiting to come meet him for the past two weeks, so I've been counting down the days. The days until he could meet Randy Foy. What's up, man? How you doing? How you doing? Sweaty, man. It's all right. They share a unique bond. Uh, you got situs inversus, huh? Yes. Like <laughs> yeah, I got it on a bracelet. Oh, you got a bracelet? I Both have situs inversus. Their organs are reversed with their heart on the right side instead of the left. When did you um, realize that you had it? I was like 11 or so. I just had like a big chest and they had an x-ray on it. And then only one out of 10,000 people have this condition. Both found out as kids. I think I was eight years old. I went to the hospital for pneumonia. They were checking for, you know, heartbeats. Once I figured it out, I was embarrassed to tell people at school because, you know, I want to, you know, I was eight years old, third grade. I didn't want nobody to think I was different. Foy's condition hasn't affected his performance on the basketball court, but before the NBA draft, he was concerned how NBA teams would react. It was like their first time seeing someone with sight versus, so I ran on the treadmill for like 40 people, 40 doctors. 
Roy was drafted as the seventh overall pick in 2006. He's become one of the best three-point shooters in the league with a soft touch and a big heart. I've never met a Nugget player, and especially someone who has the same condition as me. It was really, it was cool. Two guys whose hearts are in the right spot. Just look at it and say to yourself, I'm special. At Pepsi Center, Michelle Tuckner, <laughs> Fox 31 Denver. Lindsey Vaughn is confident in her comeback for the Winter Olympics in Sochi. She's recovering from the most serious injury of her career. It's been a long journey back, but she feels like her old self training here at Vail. It's going to be exciting for me to just be racing again. It's been a long time. It's been a lot for me physically and emotionally. So far, she has passed both tests, and now Vaughn is back home. On the slopes, she grew up skiing, testing her surgically repaired knee on a downhill course. For me, going from the lowest point in my career, you know, the weakest, and, and basically starting from zero and building my way back up. Coming back from the crash, she'll never forget, tearing the ACL and MCL in her right knee. I'm definitely a little bit surprised at how far I've come um, and that I'm so far ahead of schedule. Uh, but I was hoping for this. Before this, Vaughn never suffered a serious knee injury. Her boyfriend, Tiger Woods, has been by her side through the rehab. He helped me through it and was very supportive and someone that I could always lean on. Later this month, Vaughn will be back in the starting gate and make her return to the World Cup event in Beaver Creek. It would be huge for me if I could win in Beaver Creek. Obviously, that's expecting a lot, you know, with my first race back. Win or lose, Vaughn is going full speed ahead on her journey to the Winter Olympics. My childhood dream has been to win a gold medal in the Olympics, and I've already accomplished that. So everything from here on out is just icing on the cake. Vaughn added that she's not sure yet if Tiger Woods will come cheer her on at the Winter Olympics in Sochi, but she says she doesn't think that will be a distraction. Reporting in Vail, Michelle Tuckner, Fox 31 Denver. With Michelle Tuckner. The Nuggets hosting the best team in the NBA tonight, Golden State, but you won't see any of their stars on the court. Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Andre Iguodala, and Andrew Bogut all with the night off. Steve Kerr resting his stars because they're playing the second game of a back-to-back -to -back tonight. And there's the former Nugget familiar face, Iguodala, and the rest of the stars watching from the bench. The Nuggets got off to a fast start tonight. Here's Kenneth Fareed with the dunk. A big night for him. 24 points and 17 rebounds. A double-double. Later on the break, it's Jameer Nelson. Great bounce pass to Wilson Chandler. Throws it down at the half. The Nuggets leading 62 to 54. The Warriors came back to take the lead in the fourth, but then the Nuggets answer. Going on a 14 to 2 run. Randy Foy hits a three. He finished with 20 points. Gallo added 24 in the Nuggets. Believe it or not, win again 114 to 103. Mountain West Tournament semifinals. Wyoming taking on top seed Boise State. This was a great game. Josh Adams stealing the show. Here with the steal, goes the other way, finishes with the dunk. He had 27 points. Wyoming was down two at the half. This game goes into overtime in NOT. The shot clock winding down. It's Jason McManaman hitting the three. He's a sophomore who averaged just three points per game, hits the biggest shot of his career, and Wyoming wins in overtime. They are now one win away from the big dance, and they will face the winner of this game, Colorado State and San Diego State. The Rams playing without their best player, J.J. Avila. He sprained his ankle last night, and this game is just underway. Daniels here with the land as the Rams jumped out to an early lead. Again, this game is just underway in Los Las Vegas. Well, one day after safety, Raheem Moore leaves the Broncos and goes to the Houston Texans. The Broncos already found his replacement. Today, he's signing safety Darian Stewart to a two-year deal after he visited with the team this week. Head coach Gary Kubiak adds another former Baltimore Raven to the roster. Stewart started 14 games for the Ravens last season. You might remember this play from the Ravens wildcard playoff game against the Steelers. He had that pick in the end zone late in the game that stopped the Steelers' comeback. The Broncos told him he'll replace more at safety and Stewart says he feels like he's the final piece to the puzzle. The Broncos also adding guard Shelly Smith today. He'll help fill the void left by Orlando Franklin. He played for Gary Kubiak, drafted by the Texans, played there for five seasons. He's also blocked for one, two 1,000 yard rushers and he has local ties as a former Colorado State Ram and the Avs trying to make a push for the playoffs. They host Calgary tomorrow night. The Avs trailing the Kings by six points for the final wild card playoff spot and they have 14 games left and 10 of those against conference teams who are in front of them.
that's that's the way it should be too. It's exciting and it's uh, we're not. And the Avs again with that one home game tomorrow. Then they hit the road for a five game road trip. And again, Colorado State underway. Can you imagine if it's CSU in Wyoming again oh uh, tomorrow in the title game? That will be, uh, be quite quite a matchup.